The foundation for a smoke-free world requires people with very diverse backgrounds if we are to succeed. You know, when we look to our, our grantees, we're looking first for excellence in, in, in science. They're thinking the ideas. And so we're looking for more action-oriented grantees. The ability to really execute. And then we're also looking for diversity. Diversity by country in the world. Diversity by gender is very important to us. They're coming from biotechnology. They're coming from behavioral economics and sciences. They're even coming from molecular biology. Not the traditional tobacco control folk groomed in regulatory science, in taxes and ad bans and the size of warnings, but bringing different solutions to the table. On the health and science space, we've got a number of extraordinary people. If you think way down um, in New Zealand, Marua Glover, who heads our Center for Indigenous Health and Smoking, is a world-class researcher who spent years working among the Maori population, where smoking rates are twice that of the general population. She was also on the finalist list for New Zealand of the Year. With my grant, I've opened a centre of research excellence, focusing on Indigenous people all around the world. And first off, we need to find out what's happening, since there's such a gap in the knowledge. There's over 300 million Indigenous people across 90 countries. So looking for cultural solutions, indigenous solutions to the problem, and supporting the development of their capacity to respond to the harms of tobacco. We expect that that work will continue and accelerate over the next few years. One of the first people who asked the question, how do you actually have nicotine move from a patch into the human body and use it in what became nicotine replacement therapy is Jed Rose from Duke. Jed was known in the 80s for his work um, on developing the nicotine patch. For smokers, one of the most important things they can do to improve their health is to quit smoking because they literally face a two out of three chance of dying of their smoking. The problem is that current treatments don't offer a very high success rate. Uh, we have ideas for how to use innovative treatments and the foundation's funding will allow us to test these and hopefully make great progress in improving the long-term success rates when people try to quit smoking. With his intellectual support and his team, we believe we can hopefully make even faster progress on the smoking cessation side. The exciting thing about where we are now is that you look back and you think, you know, we've got the great team, it's amazing, and um, everything's working according to plan. But together, these are a group of initially eclectic partners coming together in a, in a, in a movement focused on that core mission of ours, ending smoking in a generation.